Before we start, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're recording on. For me, that is the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And for me, it's the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation. Ooh, get me with your little frank fat. Get that up here. Yeah. Ooh, stick me with your twiggy stick. Hello, welcome to the new podcast. Two Girls, One Pod with Angie and Evie, episode two. It's lovely to be back. Oh, what have you been up to, Miss Angela? So, uh, so, so what? Re- it's again. the remix. <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> it's all awful. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's just my mood in one day. Start off really yeah. good, go a little bit rubbish, and then by the end it's just like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what's oh, what's no. happened to you? I loved all of that. Don't ever try Did to you? be anything other than this mess because bless this mess. Bless, that's this mess. bless that's it. That's all I am. It, yeah, bless that's all, all I of do. it. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Two Girls, One Pod with Angie and Evie. I'm Evie, that's Angie. This is episode two. Let's get into it. Have we got theme song? Yeah, it was on last week, you duffer. Well, if we don't, we got another one. What have you been up to, Evie Justice um, Jones? If that's even actually, if that's even your real name. Oh, we know it is my real name. We know that your real name is Angela Bernice Kent. No, but uh, I'll tell you a little something. Speaking of Angela Bernice Kent from Wikipedia, I've yes. done a little bit of searching of my own and you're a liar. Your name isn't Evie Jones. What is it? Look it up right now. Oh, no, what have you done to me? I haven't done a single thing. You have lied to the people of Australia. Read out your names. All right. Evie Jones. That's all it said. Oh. <laughs> Evie Jones, born Evie Justice Daryl Dolan, <laughs> Tony Scott Muriel Jones. <laughs> but it was actually supposed to be Donald for Donald Trump, not Dolan. <laughs> <laughs> Evie Who Justice Dolan Daryl my, my other brother Daryl my other brother oh, Daryl my other brother Daryl my other brother Daryl my other brother Daryl Tony for Tony Abbott for Scott Tony for Dun- Scott Morrison Muriel, Muriel for Muriel's, Muriel's wedding. wedding and Jones oh, just because just and, because why and not? look now whoever whoever did this please yeah. step forward. Well, it was me, obviously, but I didn't. <laughs> but I didn't spell the Doland. My my little uh, I love my it. little team did that one. <laughs> Your joke went so dreadfully bad because I read it out as it was Doland. Written, which was I know. Doland. I was like, "Ew, read the room. It's Donald. Uh, why Doland? This is awful. Can we do this again and pretend she doesn't know?" <laughs> Doland, Doland, no, that Trump. Is- so that is the best. I'm like, Doland, have you even made that up? Like, who would make a name like Doland up? I just thought but of you all your what? favorite, like favorite, favorite straight white men of all time. <laughs> <laughs> but Daryl, well, we like Daryl. My other brother, Daryl. Daryl, that's my other brother, Daryl, my other brother, Daryl, my other <laughs> brother, brother Daryl. <laughs> that's my favorite. That's that's my favorite. They're all named Daryl. My other brother, Daryl. <laughs> well, that's how I remembered him. <laughs> Anywho, oh, how has your week been, Angela Benice? Oh, all I've done, to be honest, is work, 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 and work, work, and work, 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 work. said me got to work. I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Um, and it's lockdown here, and it's lockdown there. So other than lockdowns, all I do is work, walk, sleep, eat, repeat. Yeah, so that's my me life. Too. Is that your life too? Oh, it's it's honestly my life. It's my life and um, it's now and ever. I ain't going to live forever. <laughs> and you know what? I'm not going to live forever. Hopefully. Jesus, imagine living forever. <laughs> oh, not with oh, the name God. of Evie Justice Daryl Dolan. <laughs> I wouldn't want to live forever. Uh, <laughs> although now I'm thinking I wouldn't mind living with the name Dolan forever. Um, you know, I've watched way too many vampire movies and shows and things like that. That really scares me to think how long forever is. Well, yeah, but that's not real. 
Yeah, I know, but it just makes you think. Imagine if you <laughs> <laughs> imagine if it was. Imagine. imagine. It's not about whether it's real or not. It's about imagining the gravitas of it, Angie. That would be um, not ideal. I don't think no. I would. I don't and think we'll I would care forever, for it much. So why even talk about it? I know. Good. Good talk. Who even brought that up? <laughs> what? Dolan. Dolan did. Dolan. That oh, was the Dolan. Dolan. Did it. <laughs> All your. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dolan did it. Oh my god! I have an alter ego finally. Whenever I you finally... ramble, whenever you Dolan. ramble, it's not you. It's Dolan. <laughs> yeah, you can just go. Um. Is that you, Dolan? Dolan, get back in your box with Daryl. I think he should be called Daryl Dolan. <laughs> Daryl Dolan. That's my brother Daryl Dolan, my other brother Daryl Dolan, my other brother Daryl Dolan. That's my daughter Daryl Dolan. <laughs> That's the, my daughter The third. <laughs> oh, that is going to live rent-free in my head for the rest of my life. <laughs> I love it. I'm still just dead over your joke going so incredibly how wrong much that it's that, turned out so well. How much is that my life, though? Like, that would happen to yeah, me. I try to do a joke a back on you and I just ruin it. <laughs> and it's so lame that it works. <laughs> I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. Just to go on to something that's a, a little bit more um, serious. Actually, it's quite a lot more serious. We like to spice things oh. up here. Two girls, one pod. Yeah. There's been a lot going on this week. Um, obviously, we're not here to call people out or name names because it's not our shtees. But we want to talk about cancel culture and call out culture. I just think it's so big right now. It's so prominent in everyone's faces and we're all kind of tiptoeing as rightly so. We've had our time to throw our weight around as white people. And I think it is important for us to sit in this discomfort and talk about it. It's a funny one, cancel culture. It's not simple. Um, I actually hate the term cancel, but that's what it is. You know, we cancel people. Someone does something that's offensive and then we cancel them. Yeah. But my problem is we don't cancel everyone. No. I'm actually all for calling people out yes. on things and hoping that they'll do better. Um, but we cancel some people really, really easily and rightly so and not others. Like people – like those who play sports. Mm. They don't get cancelled as easily as someone who's, say, a celebrity. We're seeing sports people being held accountable, I think, for their actions um, Finally, in this day and age. Mm. Finally. Yeah, like the clubs fine them, suspend them, the sponsors pull out, that kind of thing. Um, but we're still seeing them on our screens, on our radios, um, on our podcasts. These are people who've done some pretty reprehensible things in my eyes. I mean, in most people's eyes. You know, if we're going to kill someone's career – that has made a racist comment, let's also kill the career of someone who's beaten their partner. Yes, yes. You know, because there seems to be a quick cull for someone of just a celebrity status yes. but not someone who's an athlete. Oh, my God, preach. So saying all of that, I also think um, it's really important to remember that when we're morally outraged from behind our screens, yeah. <laughs> um, it's really important to get the entire facts yes. and to remember – the victims, okay, because I just ask, please don't make a victim of the person who's being offensive yep. by piling on and sharing your outrage without actually supporting the victims yep. of the offence mm -hmm. because that takes over and that becomes the perpetrator's story. Oh, I was bullied. Oh, I had my life threatened, etc. you know, all of that kind of thing. So I think maybe – just, you know, focus on who the person that has – or people or whatever it is that's been offended. Yes. Um, and do something with that. You know, maybe it will never, ever really change. I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever be able to stop it. In today's climate, you know, we're looking more for entertainment and we, we often use cancel culture yeah. as a bit of entertainment. Um, but calling out someone because they've done something morally offensive towards someone or something – that needs more of our attention 
or your attention or the world's attention, like racism, sexism, sizeism, homophobia, transphobia. Um, and also before we, we cancel someone, do we just need to call them out? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, calling someone out on something is really important. Educating. And it's okay to do that. Yeah. But cancelling someone I think is also really important. But we're not cancelling we're not cancelling our sports stars. Yeah. No, you're right. We're not. And I think uh, there's been plenty of examples lately where if you have been called out by a group that is suffering, mm-hmm. own it, sit with it. Yeah. I think a lot of the time yeah. our white fragility uh, based off um, systematic racism has made us very offended by the word racism or racist but if you sit with Mm. that discomfort and own it and do the work because we did a lot of work last year on our own white fragility and our systematic racism you know we did a lot of research on it and we sat with that discomfort of knowing our privilege and how in our past we may have made mistakes but not we like anyone in general but now we can sit with it learn with it say sorry do whatever you can to learn and move forward. I think a lot of people are saying, well, that's not what I meant and get offended. But yeah. imagine how offended yeah. the people are who are going through this. They're the ones that need to be offended. Yeah, that's right. And we need to say sorry and we need to feel how awful that feels because imagine how awful they felt forever. I agree. I agree. I think as white people we really need to be more comfortable with the discomfort yes. of saying we are inherently racist. Yeah. That's how we were brought and up. And we'll do better. We are we have to we have to do better. And being called out on being any isms like racist or sex sexist. Mm, without even knowing um, homophobic. You know, we used to use the word gay. Yeah like um for yeah. someone that we didn't like. Yeah. We used or this you know, is gay. We, we can yeah. call anyone a fat you know, a fat person, you know, all of these things. Or don't be a girl or don't be a, you know, things like that. Yeah, exactly. All these things which are steeped in all the isms, you know, that we have to be okay with someone saying that's not okay to use the, to call someone retarded or to call someone gay or to call someone fat or a girl. You know, none of that is okay. No. These are the kind of things that we do call out and get called out for. We need to be able to say, you're right. Yeah. My God, I'm mortified. That's my that privilege I, showing. I still have mm. that in me. That is my privilege showing. Yeah. And we'll always have that. We'll always have that white privilege because that's who we are. That's how we were born. It's how we we're brought up. It's got nothing to do with our economic status. It's got nothing to do with um, culture or anything. It just simply is the fact that we have white skin and that we get things a lot easier than other people. And we'll never understand what other people go through or how they feel. We do in our certain ways, like we do as a woman because we have men, men the patriarch rules and, you know, we have to. But, you know, it goes like that and we're pretty high up on the the jungle, whatever they call it, you know, the, the food chain. The food chain, we're pretty high up. And that's why it is okay to be called out. And, you know, if I ever do something in the future or if I've done something in the past that is really offensive, I will be called out for it. And yep. I expect to be called out for it. And if I am cancelled, I'm cancelled. And I would take that on the chin, to be honest. I will deserve it. Um, yep. I think it's only a matter of time before... I do do something that's highly offensive or mildly offensive because I'm <laughs> human and that's what we do. It's how I react to being called out that that will make the huge difference in my yes. character. I think that's a really good point because you're so right. We all make mistakes due from past conditioning or the system or whatever it is, but knowing now that that's not how it it doesn't go that way anymore, mm-hmm. sitting with the discomfort, knowing, saying sorry, and if you're offended by having to sit with that, well, that's even more reason why you have to do the work. Yeah. If you're being called out and you're getting offended, that's even more reason to do the work. Exactly. And it's fine. And we all have it. to do it. Own it. Move forward. Don't say I didn't mean that because you, no. you may not have meant to have meant it. But you've hurt someone but you and di- listen. You, you did mean it. We just sometimes don't know that we mean what we mean because we don't yeah. ever check ourselves regularly. I think the biggest thing with this is to educate and not hate, although I don't feel like anybody who's upset – 
you know, owes people that time to, you know, baby them through it. Mm. But I think it is very important as humans for us to not be so cross all the time if someone does want to do the work. If they don't, well, then you can be very cross or by all means, of course. But if somebody wants to own their shit and be like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean this and I I did what I did and I want to learn and grow with you, then good on you. Because we all just need to grow. We really do. We've got a lot of unlearning to do and we've got a lot of learning to do. You need to grow your tits. (laughs) Well, I actually do. A knot. <laughs> no, I need to grow my bum. I have no no bum. You have no tits. We could swap. Oh no, that doesn't work because you got no bum and I got no tits. But I wish you had a <laughs> big bum and I had. You know what I mean? So no. we could swap. Yeah, I do. I do. We could like I mean. take pe- bits of our parts together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I'm drunk. Just kidding. It's just water. <laughs> Anyway, let's let's go on from that because I started to get like I felt it in my body. I really love that topic because it's so uncomfortable and I love sitting in my discomfort because I love to unlearn all the toxic yeah. shit that I've been taught growing yeah. up. I mean, I remember there was a, a a post where you said something about someone being your spirit animal and someone called you out on it because they were yes. explained that it's a native Indian um, American term that we've appropriated and blah, blah, blah. And you were so amazing. Like you were like – Oh, wow, I didn't know. And of course it is. I'm never yeah. going to use that term again. And they were like, I think, shocked that you were so open to being called out instead of, well, I didn't know or, geez, I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, how dare you get offended over me offending you? <laughs> There's a lot of that. Yeah, I was like, not nah, my privilege is showing there and I'm sorry I didn't do, I hadn't done the research and I didn't know mm. it was offensive and I won't use it and I haven't used it again. I, I don't. No. No. Listen to this. Listen. Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie ah! McGuire. Evie. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love it when you put a ya yeah on the end of my name. Do you remember when I used to scare you? <laughs> you do it all the time and I get so all the time. cross. I get proper cross. Like I get angry. Yeah. Pardon me. Oh. <laughs> I thought I was going to be loud and I wanted to scare you. Oh, God, scared you. Scared you. Yeah, why? Why? What do you get out of that? What is your sick, sick obsession with scaring Angelie? I think it's ever since I was a child, my brother used to do it to me. So I think it's maybe just that, like just the fact that I can do it to someone (laughs) else oh because I was the baby of the family. I didn't get to do that to anyone. So you took it out from, on me. Although to be fair, I probably could have done it to him. I could see you doing that. I just find it hilarious. You know where we got that from, don't you? Yeah. Do you remember where we got that from? Lizzie McGuire. Yeah. Yeah. That dad? Yeah, listen. Jamie Oliver. Oh. Wiggle, wiggle. Oh. Shawshank Redemption. Oh. Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> Surprise. Oh, no. Oh, he's a Latino <laughs> princess. princess. <laughs> Lizzie McGuire. There, <laughs> Lizzie McGuire. That's what I was waiting for. Now, we found it so funny because he would say things in like, he'd say hello in other languages like Konnichiwa and, and stuff like that and we just found it funny but he'd say Shawshank Redemption or, but it didn't matter what he said. He would scare the shit out of his dad and we just found that video hilarious and Lizzie McGuire was the main the one. one that just got me uh, you'd come up the hallway and I would be waiting behind mm, the door for ages and I would just go Lizzie McGuire for almost too long to the point I thought how long did she wait there for to Lizzie McGuire yeah, like me days I could be days <laughs> what about that time you took it so far that I was changing <laughs> in my room <laughs> there's this like so I've got my door and then up the top there's like a glass bit she went and she got a ladder she climbed the ladder to get up into the glass bit to go over the top of the glass bit to Lizzie McGuire me and I was in the nude <laughs> and I was like Yay! like I lost all of my shit 
I was like, you've taken this too far. You are a munter. Too far. Oh, my God. It's just so good. There was there was shower ones. There were toilet ones. It was so, there was you just so many good ones. all my reactions. They would have been even more outrageous than the dads because I, like, scream and, like, all the anger from my childhood must come out because I'm just like, fuck you. Yes. And you're like, whoa, Angie. The latest one on TikTok, people are doing it, like, just starting the James Brown I Feel Good song. Wow. And um, <laughs> wow. And it's just getting people's reactions to it because they're often cooking and they just like flip pans and <laughs> eggs and drop things. It's, it's brilliant. Uh, I just love a scare. I love do. a scare. I become addicted to it. And I think the reaction you receive from me is so addictive that you're just like, yeah. I'm going to do this or a damn day. <laughs> Or a day. And you did. And I'm a bag of nerves. So thank you to you and to Mark Kent for making my life a living hell. (laughs) I'm just passing it down. Thanks to my brother, Matthew. (laughs) Just passing on that horrible, horrible scare gene. You know what? At the end of the day, it really wasn't me. It was Daryl Dolan. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm going to do the next time I'm going to scare you. I'm going to go, Daryl Dolan. Daryl Dolan. <laughs> Forget Lizzie McGuire. Daryl. Daryl Dolan. Daryl Dolan. All right. Well, look, I think that's all we've got time for today. I think we've uh, chatted absolute dross and some. But mm-hmm. before we go, I thought we could read a few of the reviews we received from last week's a first episode. Oh, yeah. And one in particular, which was just really like stood out to me because I just thought, what a bloody muppet. Yeah. It says. What? Someone wrote a horrible one, did they? Not a horrible one, just a weird one. <laughs> a weird one? Oh, that's not good. It goes a little bit something. It goes a little something like this. Can we rate ourselves? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Because <laughs> I just did. So happy to be here. Oh, by, that was my that was my one. By, <laughs> that was my by, review of me. By Dolan. Dolan reviewed his own podcast. Review. Are we allowed to review ourselves? Because I just did. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's a good I gave it a good five stars. I hadn't even listened to it yet. <laughs> Imagine if you gave it one on your I know. own podcast. Accidentally. You were out oh, of control. I think but, that you can review it too if you like. I probably won't, but thank you for offering. Well, you probably should. Good five stars would be nice. Thank you. <laughs> F- rate and review. Five stars only, please. <laughs> but we had some other beautiful ones. People were just so lovely. Th- thoroughly enjoyed the discussions and topics. We'll be turning in eagerly every week. Oh, that's so tuning in. nice. What did Not I? turning in. Did I write turning? Turn in. Sorry, it's turn very in. little. I can't read. I need glass. I can't see without my glasses. Oh, that's all right. I've got, I've got some here. Yeah, read that one. That's a goodie. Two of my fave feminists, strong, independent queens, together again. Love the first episode. Can't wait. I haven't Aww. read any yet. This is just making my heartstrings tingle. Oh, your tingle is a tingles. We got one from a boy. Did we? Yeah. I don't need another reason to love Evie Jones and Angela Bernice Kent, but here we are. <gasps> oh. They're brilliant together. Love how they bounce off each other. Can't wait to hear more. Oh, two of my fave feminist, strong, independent queens together again. Oh, thank you, QF EPI. Loved the first episode. Thank you. That's almost as good as my review of myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> fabulous. So glad you decided to do this. Well, thank you, Shazzy18. Oh, please review us five stars only. <laughs> Just like, just do as Evie Jones does. Review. Just do as I do. Not as I say. Well, that's lovely. Not as I say. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, it's really lovely. Thanks, guys. Also, we discussed today um, things about white privilege and things like that. I think it's really important to also mention there's a great book that we looked at last year. It's very, very uncomfortable, difficult book to do, but I highly recommend it. It's by a woman called Layla F. Said. And it's called Me and White Supremacy. It's actually like a journaling. It's kind of like it's a 28-day course basically that you put yourself through daily. And it will put you in an extremely uncomfortable situations daily. And it's a really great way to learn 
um, our supremacy as white people. Um, and it's extremely educational. So I highly recommend it. Um, we highly recommend you going and it's supporting um, a lot of Indigenous artists, people of colour, women of colour. There's Instagram accounts that we follow personally. We'll put yeah. some up in the show notes that we love and adore um, and learn so much from. So if you're interested as well, they'll be they'll be in the show yeah, notes. Yeah, go check them out. We highly recommend it. We do. But rate and review. <laughs> Five stars only. <laughs> Daryl. This is a- d- d- Dolan, 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 Daryl, Daryl Doland. This is Daryl Doland. I'm going to see you next last week. <laughs> I'll see you and my brother Daryl next week. <laughs> last um, week. But seriously, this is Angela Bernice Kent. This is Daryl <laughs> Doland and we will see you next week. <laughs> no, seriously, that's enough. Okay, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't want to be here. Get my tooths on the on my microphone. Oh, you silly little dog. <laughs> but thanks for listening, guys. Until next week. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Oh, that was morbid. <laughs> what my bye. bye? Bye. See you next bye. week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh. Bye everyone. I may never come back. After again. that, after your five star review, you're out. You know your job's done forever. So you know what we'll do with that? We'll take the pressure down. <laughs> if you can feel it, it's rising like a storm. <laughs> take the pressure. <laughs> Take all of the wheels and then you turn them around. Take the pressure down. (laughs) Key change. Take the pressure down.